in front of you. I hope you can see it, discovering Papa, which COVID has meant we had to uh, do this another way rather than live. Uh, it's going to cover these topics today, um, in the next half hour maybe. Uh, what is Papa? The difference between researching genealogy and uh, researching Papa. A brief look at uh, uh, some Papa here in Rotorua, and then uh, get into some resources that may be able to help you that we have in the Rotorua Library, Takamori, uh, mainly based around level two. Uh, so they call it Don Sef, the Don Sefford room. Uh, by way of EWE histories, uh, Māori Land Court Minute Books, Microfish, and online options. So the question is, uh, what is Whakapapa? And I've taken some words, wise words from uh, Te Whare Huia Muroi, who's professor of Māori at Waikato University uh, from Tūhua. He says, uh, Tēnei mea ko ta Whakapapa, E herenga atu tērā mōu ki te whenua. This thing, whakapapa, that's what ties or connects you to the land. That's the here. E herenga atu tērā mōu ki te iwi, ki te hapū, ki te whāna. Ties you to your tribe, to your sub-tribe, to your whāna. And he herenga atu tērā mōu ki o marae. And it ties you to your marae. And so he concluded, uh, Nā reira he mea nui, kia mōhio ngā tamariki me ngā mokopuna ki tēnei mea ki te whakapapa, kia mōhio ai rātou nō he a rātou. And uh, so it's a great thing, children and grandchildren, to know their whakapapa, uh, so, it, so they know where they're from. The difference, uh, as my first opinion, between genealogy, the study of genealogy and whakapapa is that genealogy is shown there on the left, as a bottom-up process, all the, all the guides say, start with yourself and get all your vitals, your, you know, your date of birth, etc., cetera, um, marriage. Same with your siblings and then go from there to your parents, get the same vital statistics and go to their siblings if you can and go up to grandparents and great-grandparents. Whereas Whakapapa uh, is always uh, a top-down uh, process. So it always starts with one significant ancestor and it drops down generation by generation, sometimes straight down in, in a single line, sometimes it branches out and you get all of the um, siblings and eventually it gets to you. So it looks different. Uh, so here you have a family tree on genealogists would be used to seeing, you know, the base of the tree is uh, the person, the me, mother and father, and then you got paternal line, the father's line. Uh, and you've got the maternal line to the mother's line. Whereas Whakapapa on the right shows you it's a, it's a, you know, it's a single um, top-down line, starting in this case, uh, sort of heading to Hapu on it. That's a, um, one, of the, uh, one of the two uh, pathways for Te Arawa. That's from Unuku Mai Rarotonga and comes down, down, down. You know, it comes down to a son, to the next son, to the next son, all the way down. And this photo is just to demonstrate that it's not always a single line. Um, some will branch off. It's actually easier when it's recited to listen to single lines down. Uh, slightly harder when they add the wives. A lot harder when they do one like this, when they um, go across and put all the siblings in. It's harder to, you know, picture it when you're listening. And that brings me to this point that, of course, Whakapapa was a awaha, an oral art form. You can see there were some memory props with that Rako Whakapapa there. Uh, experts, and it was, a, it was a public event whereby, you know, usually either you use Whakapapa to uh, join and welcome visiting um, tribes, uh, sub-tribes, 
or you were reciting someone's up at their funeral. Uh, in terms of Tarawa, the earliest written whakapapa came in the model land courts. Uh, and that was the native land court in those days, sorry. Uh, at a Makatu sitting on the 18th of October, 1867. MMB is Makatu Minute Book 1, page 113. And the great Ngāti chief Te Pōkiha um, said, I claim this piece of some of the land, the land uh, as being a tain of tangaro. And then he gave two lines, uh, from one from Rangihekai Waho, which drops down, and the two lines indicate that he didn't give all the names. He, he drops them out, went down to Tua, Rangihekai Waho, to Tua, no, down to Hori, Hopoko, Natipikoe. Then from Kawati, same thing, he didn't, he left a, a few generations out, comes to Tanifa, there's tangaro, and Going back to Tani for his sister was to Iringa and comes down to Katarina, that was Pikiao's wine, um, to Pokiao's wine. Uh, you can see there from 1927, you know, some 90 years ago, a, an alliance of tribes known as Te Ure Unu Kopako, which took a Nati Unu Kopako from Rotokawa, the airport, Rumata. Ngāti Whikaui, which is all of Rotorua City, Ngārara Nui from Nōtaha, Ngāti Rangi Wiwi from Te Oho, and Ngāti Rangi Te Aurere from the Tengai Junction. They held joint uh, hui from 1927, firstly starting at Ōwhata Marae, who were the drivers of the hui, and, and their goal was to set down the whakapapa that they could all agree upon. All of the whakapapa as related to Te Uri and Kupopaka and Tauru. And so you can see there, they went right through five years. They had uh, expert committees set up, and eventually, people who attended could go away with their books full with the agreed upon uh, whakapapa. Going hand in hand with whakapapa is a uh, chikanga, all the correct uh, protocols. And the two I want to point out simply uh, one on the left, whakapapa is to be kept away from food at all times, whether it be a book. Uh, whether it be a computer, you keep away from food. And then uh, uh, a relatively new issue is what do you do? How do you dispose of written whakapapa that's written on paper? You say you no longer need it. Um, and I've heard some people say, well, you know, I cut it up, say I cut a key and then burn it, rather than throwing it in a bin. That's, I suppose that's the um, tapu associated with whakapapa. Some advice. Hamura uh, Pango was one of the major uh, land court witnesses and chiefs of Ngāti Whikaue, and he said, Kia mau ki ngā whakapapa ao koutou krou, e tino tohu ngā rātou i o rātou nei rā. Hold fast to the genealogies of your elders, they were experts in their day. And he says, Kau wa rawa e whakahe i tā tētahi whakapapa, aha ko ki te atu e he ana. You know, don't contradict another's genealogy even though you can see it's wrong. So those were his two words Advice, two of his words of advice. I kept her from Ngati Fiko and Ngati Tarafai. He said, Kia pai te manaki i e nei taong. Kau e chikua ki te tahi, kei ngaro i a kouta. He has frightness to his family. Ka noho mane ne kouta. Kaore he piringa, kaore he whakarurunga. Mea mahi nui ka fifi, kaore i kō ke atu. You know, look after these treasures, don't give them away in case they are lost and alienated from you. You will have no refuge, no haven. It was a major task getting these whakapapa, and there was nothing better. Kia mau, kia u, nga o koutou kroua e nei, kaua hei aro ki tā te tanga. Pain and hold fast to these treasures of your elders. Don't concern yourself with the whakapapa others have. Now, along with chikanga whakapapa is closely linked with the uh, mātou ma ranga Māori. You know, knowledge uh, about uh, Te Ao Māori. And one of the academics, Te Ahu Karumu Royal uh, from uh, Te Whare or Rauko in Ōtaki, he said this, Whakapapa and Mātouranga Māori are inextricably linked. In this regard, no discussion on Mātouranga Māori is complete without discussing the relationship between Whakapapa and Mātouranga Māori. Similarly, a really uh, famous and uh, knowledgeable co-martua, Edward of Stirling of Tapano Apanu, um, from Waiho Bay, 
uh, area, East Cape, said in the Māori world, you have to know your tribal history and your whakapapa, otherwise you're nothing. So he's saying, you know, to be a renowned um, komatua, um, those are the things you need to know. So the point making is that whakapapa, tikanga and mato ranga Māori are all inextricably linked. Now I'll give you an example of when one is missing. You can have whakapapa without mato ranga, and what do you have? So on the right is a top-down example, starting from ko oho mairangi, or it's oho mairangi. Um, it's a tararere, single line of descent, goes down from oho mairangi, to muturangi, to taunga, mawake, uruika, it says ko uruika, rangi tapu, atua matua, hau mai tapiti, tamata kapua, captain of Tower of Nuru, kahu matamomo, his son, tawaki moi taunga, unuku mai rarotonga, rangi tiki, tu haurangi, and he marries one of his wives, rongo mai papa, um, the other wife is cut off on the left. That's who the mother was, Takitaki Hekuro, down to Tutiamuchi. Now, it comes, this page was taken out of a Fano Fakababa book. The um, Kaitiaki of the book, uh, it was written by his grandfather, but he had uh, no matara. He didn't know even one of those uh, ancestors listed on that line, that Fakababa line. And so he had all. All the whakapapa, none of the mātauranga, and so it meant nothing to it. He couldn't decipher it. He could be reading this upside down, all he knew. And that's it. Link. <clears throat> you know, if I, um, if this book had been written or not, I, I knew this person, uh, I would have uh, directed him here to Raimon Enius E Oho. You know, wake up. <laughs> and it's a book that covers the whakapapa and migration of the Tarawa Waka. And covers the story of Oho Mairangi, you know, which means to be awoken from the heavens. Um, and he's uh, uh, back in Hawaii, Tiarawa was known as, you know, uh, Ngati Oho Mairangi. And so uh, bringing you to what we have available for those who are researching Papa for the first time. On uh, Paparua, our level two, we have this facility here. It looks like Fort Knox, but you know, you're more than welcome to go in at any time. It's open six days a week, closed Sundays. Um, the Friday quarter or Don Stafford, the Don Stafford room. And you're looking there, and right when you open the doors, uh, on the right is the Tarawa section. And same thing. I'm now going to cover both top down and bottom up now, ways of learning whakapapa. So, Top down of the Mato Ranga Māori first the tribal histories. So inside the um, Parekoro of Don Stafford, we have Iwi histories and Um, You see the Te Aroa book there written by Don Stafford himself and published in 1967. And it gives you all the stories and it gives you, the, you know, a really good background on the history and the main uh, whakapapa of Te Aroa. Similarly, if you're too far at all, the second half of the, or the other half, sorry, the second half of the Te Aroa Waka is too far at all. Uh, it was published three years later, 1970, by uh, John Tahiri Keke Grace. And he tells the stories of Tuwhare Tour. And then in his appendices, he has the main lines, the Whakapapa lines of Tuwhare Tour. So Te Arawa comes down from, you know, the main character is the uh, captain of the canoe, Tamata Kapu. Tuwhare Tour comes down from the navigator, priest, Ngātoroirangi. And even better, uh, right inside the door on the right there, we have... Um, Ngāti Whakauri, history written by Hamu Mitchell, and uh, gives you whakapapa and stories. And uh, a poem of Whakaua written by uh, Cyrus Hingston uh, gives you um, the same thing, the histories related to each of the Whakauri at Marae and the whakapapas and the main ancestors. So, you know, if you're looking, if you're not going and looking, those are the um, Bibles. Going past... Um, on the left there, the shelves, uh, you know, this is basically the um, second, third, fourth shelves. And you have all the rest of the uh, tribal histories for New Zealand from the top, Taitukura, right down to the South Island. And I've just shown two examples there, Tainui, Austin Best. But, uh, you know, you, you get both the Maturanga Māori uh, histories and stories and whakapapa from those, these books. Depends on what you're affiliations. 
uh, this author here, I wanted to highlight because he, he's just, I think he's in the three of the six books we have of his, and he uh, he gives 80%, some of his books are just um, whakapapa. Um, one of the few to do that. He, he published them, he really wanted them out there. So if you're from, you know, Tauranga, Matatu, Ngāti Pukinga, you know, you're very lucky. Now, the easiest way, um, of course, is to, uh, you know, find your own whānau reunion book or whakapapa book. Now, some, a lot of families have their own um, and they're held by, you know, really, you have to find out if you're lucky. But sooner or later, even if you do a lot of study on the iwi and hapu lines and from key ancestors and you, you go through bottom-up process of your knowing your parents and grandparents etc you're going to get a knowledge gap and so here's what else you can do um you know so here's the bottom-up process working up as high as you can go even to get one of these uh, you know, grand grandparents, six generations would be fantastic if you can get that back there because um, it, later on you'll see when you get to the model Court, you have to be that far back uh, to find an ancestor who spoke in the native land court. And so the idea then, and where the tried and true method is to go and interview older family members. You now take the time out. Uh, and I found that particularly the woman knew far more than our men. Our granddad, my granddad knew far more than our granddad. Um, there's a quote here by a Canadian academic, Henry uh, Mitzberg. He says, while hard data, your names, dates, etc., informs the intellect, it is largely soft data, stories that generates wisdom. Uh, but here's a tip. Family stories can be illuminating, but beware. You know, people often leave things out. Some instances they get the story completely wrong. And this is why family stories should be used as a clue as opposed to factual accounts um, until you can prove the story actually happened. It's just a great story, uh, but no proof of an event or relationship. And I'll give you an example. Um, uh, I once interviewed my grandfather's younger brother, and he spoke about his father and said, oh, he was very good to them, you know, never... I never growled them, uh, liked them a lot. Um, the only thing was he didn't like, uh, the only thing he didn't like about him was that he left all his land to the second family. He had, uh, his, his father had uh, two wives, one died. Um, the implication was, the clear implication that um, he and his siblings had been left with no land. Uh, and then I went online to the New Zealand Archways, New Zealand Archives, the, the Archway Search um, Pathway. You know, I found his father's will, <coughs> and it showed actually his father had equally divided up all his lands between 11 of his 13 children. Two had passed away, and neither had any um, children. And so, you know, if I had believed that, I would have thought that the um, yeah, there were 11 born to the first wife and two more to the second wife. I would have believed that the two from the second wife got all the land, and that wasn't case all of them. It was very clearly set out. He was very fair in uh, allocating his land to his children. Uh, now, uh, this is a, uh, a website. It's an index uh, put together by the um, Auckland University. And it's great saving you um, going through all the, all the minute books from the Māori Land Court, Native Land Court. It covers a specific period. You can see there, 1865 to 1910 only. And you just put in an ancestor's name. This one here for me is five generations back. And you'll see there, I've got 19 results. And on the right, under the district, you'll see Wairiki, 18 of them are in our district here, the Bay of Penny, Wairiki. One was Waikato Manipura, but actually that court case was set in Ohinamutu. And um, from here, you can often find out. So I, I put up Aramakaraka Huchua and, um, you know, was able to um, get verbatim what he said in, in land court, plus uh, Whakapapa he left. Uh, go, from, go from there, you'll see 
it's, it's got the minute book and read Rotura MB minute book number 29. And you go straight to 159, 160, 163. And we have some in the Donald's room, a whole bunch of them. Um, they're all of the ones that relate to uh, Rotorua. If you want to look outside, if you're from a different tribe, you go to the Māori Land Court, which is next door to our building. Uh, and you have to submit, uh, you know, go to the office line up. They'll bring it to the into their room, and you can look at them there. Or you can go to drive up to Waikato University, and they have all of the minute books right for every single um, land court district in New Zealand, and you can spend all day up there. And they're just on shelves, uh, free access. You don't have to you know, have an intermediary. Um, just got to get used to the hand uh, written script. Um, yeah. Um, coming back to verifying, um, my grandmother told me this. She said, "Oh, my grandfather, Adam, only had one sibling, a sister, Ihipera." And but I found in this minute book, there's his father, Hutuha Tuhoto, married his mother, Mariana, and had one child, Tamsi Hutuha, who had no children, no issue. Another, Kahukoti Hutuha, same thing. Then he had the sister that my grandmother knew. That's why uh, uh, Ihipera Hutuha married Matuha Enopa, and this, this is a Natu Nupopapa family. Mita Hutuha had known. Sutane Kai Hutuha had no children. And her grandfather, who married her grandmother. And then there was another sister who lived as well but left the district and was left out of all the land. And then finally, and so when I showed my grandmother this, she was amazed. <laughs> and then, uh, I can only assume that they all didn't live to, uh, uh, you know, they died in relatively young age, while she never knew them. She only knew Ihipera. Um, so what else is in now uh, in the uh, Don Savage files? He's, He's left his own um, very well indexed notes on histories and uh, some biographies. So that's all in the front cabinet on the right there. In the back are the electoral rolls. And you use those to trace residence and occupancy, you know, sorry, occupation. Um, very handy over time. You just have the most current set in there. Now, up on level two, we also have a microfish. Um, there's a machine there. You, 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 you pull out a little, either, either it's on a spool, it's on a, mostly it's on a little card and you, you turn on the light and it shows up. It shows your historical birth, death, and marriage, not in great detail, usually just one line. It's not like that you get on, on the certificate. In our microfish cabinet, we have uh, at the top, New Zealand births between 1840 and 1990. Second draw, we have marriages between the same date. Third draw, we have deaths, same date. And then we have uh, on the fourth, in the fourth draw, war deaths and both wars come down to electoral rolls of those years. New Zealand cemetery records, which are helpful, and then the, the term will bio, biographical index, obituaries in other words. Now, if you get through here and you still get nothing, now you can try online. Oh, that, that's the order I would do it. Um, and there are a number of, you would probably know, a number of genealogy websites. The top ones are ancestry.com is the biggest. You can see there it's got, some people will say it's got, it's got 16 plus billion records. And the next biggest is MyHeritage. And, and these two don't have a lot of each other's records, which is interesting. Uh, you can sometimes get parts of it for free or go to trial. Um, but then you often have to subscribe. Family searches from the uh, Mormon Latter-day Saints Church, uh, find my path in Genai. Uh, two lesser, but they, they could be useful. Now, if you've got a library card, you can um, you can use our library edition of Ancestry.com um, until the end of uh, December this year. We've got a subscription. And so you can see it there on the left. You look down, 
the menu, you're looking for online database, and it's the very first one, Ancestry Library Edition. And when you go there, you know, have a look along the left top in the start page, um, and you can either start making your own tree, uh, people often do that, um, or you go to the search and the search all records. And one of the tips is, you know, you, you, if you can't find the name, then change the spelling and have a crack at different variations. Um, often you'll put in the name, and you'll come up with a million, um, million to go to, then you want to show more options and narrow search now and go to different sources. You know, I like going by location. A big coming thing, of course, is DNA. Everyone's got DNA that will really help you. But I'm assuming uh, there's not that more you've done it yet. So search. Um, okay, this is someone's tree, and you can see there it, it could start from anyone. It could be the first one, and it goes back in a pedigree. Yeah, you know, back one generation, and all those green leaves are hints. So you hit on it, and they give you some hints to do certain stuff. Problem with anything online is you you really need to verify. Yeah. So I've mm -hmm. seen real mistakes here just on our own. I know. So you know some questions to ask rather than accepting things as fact. You know, have a look at the dates if they make sense. Have a look at the place. So you may you may be adding. They often let you add on um, family trees. You, you may be adding on someone who's not even related in a mistaken belief that they're your ancestors. And then you just got to ask yourself the evidence. Now, what evidence do I have that this is correct? What if there's any evidence that's not correct? You've got to be discerning, you know, uh, fact versus fakes. Uh, another online thing we have to look through is our um, cemetery explorer. Um, this is useful if you don't know, you know, we know this because this goes up to uh, Momoku as well as. Um, you know, around the place. Um, I put in, you know, found two pennies here. Um, one was my grandfather's younger brother and the other one was his father and shows you exactly where they're buried. So over time, you know, you can forget where they are. And this is in the Silo Street Cemetery, Rush River, Rush River Cemetery. Uh, I've often used the archways to see if there's anything in terms of wills. Um, I just start in the archway and do a simple search. And see here, I put in, um, oh, yeah, I put in uh, my great grandfather's name and got three um, titles, push go. And that's where I got Ngongo um, Pene, uh, AKA, also known as Ngongo Pene Tehuki, a widow. And it's got his uh, probate as well. You can bring those up. Some other things like the land valuation you have to pay for. Uh, I've used these. Um, these are modern newspapers. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, see, there are 34 newspapers written between 1842 and 1932, basically 100 years. And a lot of them were actually um, religiously based and, and tribally based. But I put in a search there uh, for an ancestor, Anaha Rahui. Well, it should be Te Rahui, but if you put T, you get hundreds of thousands, and you don't want that. And there's um, there's the list that came up of uh, matched queries, and you know, pushed one, and it talks about um, the highlights. So this was Te Pukiki Higurangi, and it's a uh, you know, it's an invitation put out by Pirimi Matayafia to Tupara Tokaichua. They were inviting everyone, you know, um, to a Whakapapa in March of 1905. Uh, the equivalent of new people Māori is uh, Papers Pass, uh, and same thing, you know, uh, put the same name in there and I think came up with uh, 49 pits and you can bring them up and it, it just fills in some gaps sometimes, shows you what they were politically active or were they standing for office, uh, Māori office, or they were on a major committee, or you know, they got arrested. 
uh, as well as the entire um, New Zealand Armed Services um, online. I like to use the Māori Battalion one, the 28th Māori Battalion, and you know, bring up all the pennies um, and then go through and see, you know, what their rank was, where, where they were living. Now, if you hit a, a wall as you will, <laughs> then then it might be time, you know, to consider paying for the vital uh, records. And, and those are, of course, births, deaths, and marriages. And you get a lot more information uh, from the main certificate. You can get decorated ones, like the one in the middle and on the right. We can get plain ones. I think uh, you pay about $3 extra for the decorated ones. Oh, there they are. Measure your costs. Um, as I say, it, it's kind of um, worth it. Um, but it costs you money. So getting to the end now, you know, I just want to say, you know, may your whakapapa research be fruitful and just remember whakapapa, you know, Mātauranga, Māori, and Tikanga are all inextricably linked. And um, just to find out the list of names will not be helpful if you don't know, you know the tribal background. We haven't retained, because we are oral tradition, we haven't retained histories on every ancestor. Um, and so you might come down three or four and you just know the name. And then when you get to one, then you remember some significant fight there were not even there. I now stop and wish you well. Hey, Kona. <laughs>